Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Underflow and today we're going to be talking about JStation. A lot of people know of JStation, but they don't know of all of the things that happened with JStation. So anytime I see anybody make a video about JStation, it's usually about the same exact thing over and over and over, just him faking his girlfriend's death for views. But what if I told you that that's not even one of the worst things that he's done whatsoever? It ranges from him comparing himself to Jesus Christ, from buying a slave off of the dark web, and much more nasty stuff. Now, the very first controversy I want to talk about that he was ever involved in, if I'm not mistaken, was right after Logan Paul's, you know, Suicide Forest scandal that he had that caused him to make that infamous, terrible apology video. Jay Station, about a few days after that all occurred, went to the Suicide Forest and made his own video with finding a bunch of stuff from dead people in that forest. Even going as far as to go into that forest, take a picture of himself, and then even photoshop someone hanging from a tree behind him. This obviously caused a lot of backlash to the point where he got into an online beef against Keemstar just constantly going back and forth, but what really shocked me was Jay Station's whole video he made about it targeting Keemstar and talking about why he did it. I've been wanting to make a video on Jay Station for quite some time now, but every time I would look into him, the rabbit hole would just go deeper and deeper and deeper. Not many people know of all of the stuff that he's did, so I'm going to try to cram as much of the most unknown stuff that he did in today's video. I'm not going to focus a lot on the entire faking his girlfriend's death for views, because that's one of the main things that everybody would talk about, so I'm going to focus on a lot of the other terrible stuff he's done that isn't talked about as often. But here was Jay Station's response video to Keemstar calling him out about the entire faking finding a dead body in Japan's suicide forest. Okay, so my goal is to get the most views. Obviously, that's not a bad thing. Stop saying it is. Stop saying it is. You jealous. You jealous. Stop. Stop saying this bad thing to want views, bro. Okay, I know my audience, dude. Is it my, is it my fault? that people want to click people want to click on a dead body more than a picture that doesn't have it okay so man stop sending hate at me bro people in majority want to click on that video more if there's a dead guy in it what's that say nothing about me it doesn't doesn't say nothing about me Ask the community why they why they want to click on that video more than if I than if I was just standing there beside a tree, bro. I want as many people to click on that shit as possible. Duh, duh. Okay, now as a as a video creator, how am I gonna get across what we did in that video the best? Okay, we went in there and we found some items of dead people bro i can't just hold up a tin can bro i have to get the the message across that something went down dude that something crazy happened whatever now it's obvious a lot of the youtubers who make similar content to jay station here their main goal is just to get as many views as humanly possible with ever it being a misleading title or a misleading thumbnail it doesn't matter as long as it yields the best results but how can you genuinely sit there and lie to yourself and try to flip the situation saying that it shows more on the people clicking the video than it does on you as if you didn't sit there and specifically edit in a person hanging from a tree and then slightly blur it just to make sure people could know exactly what it was in that thumbnail. You're using someone quite literally at their lowest point committing just to get an extra few clicks on your channel. In the sparking peak of one of the biggest controversies to ever happen on this platform that took place about five years ago, almost six now. He's done this multiple times. He did it with a lot of other people, people that obviously he's never known before. A famous YouTuber named Etika, who sadly passed away. He even did it with him, making fun of a bunch of other YouTubers, saying that, you know, if you don't have depression like Etika did, then you don't have depression at all and you need to suck it up. 
But we're going to come back to the whole Etika situation that happened with J-Station. I think we should take a different approach and look at something else J-Station did that was just downright goofy. One of the weirdest things that I've ever seen someone do on this platform. I know people go to great lengths to do anything to get the smallest amount of views on any type of social media platform at all. It doesn't matter. As long as they get their 10 seconds of fame, that's perfectly fine with them. But J-Station exceeded my expectations of a little bit goofy wackiness. He goes out of his way to make a video of him buying a slave off of the dark web. He immediately starts off the video by saying, I don't support slavery. Like, every time I think about it, it's just genuinely insane. It baffles my mind that some kids grew up watching J-Station. Kids would go home from school, get on their sticky iPad, and then immediately go to YouTube to find a new J-Station video. Whether it's him, you know, calling the ghost of his great dead grandmother, or buying a slave off of the dark web, or faking his girlfriend's death at 3am with a Ouija board, oh my god, so scary, gone wrong, gone sexual. You know, it didn't matter what he would upload, he would constantly get a massive amount of uploads by a bunch of little kids doing the dumbest shit possible possible in the nastiest shit possible at the same exact time take a look at his slave video web guys so we do not know if this is safe so i got my boy almond mo tv with me what's popping bro with good generation this is gonna be insane because honestly i do not support slavery at all and whoever doing this is really bad and they should be put up in jail guys that's why me and jay are gonna save one of their lives and also if this video gets 40,000 likes me and jay are gonna save more slaves off of the dark web I want you to really peep this for a second. I want you guys to align your thoughts with mine. Take a minute. Close your eyes right now if you're listening to this. If you can close your eyes at this moment, please do it. Sit there. Just take a deep breath in and get ready to imagine what I'm going to say in my head. Two grown men inside of one of their houses, sitting in their living room with a camera in hand, recording the other one while they scream and do wild hand gestures, talking about, Oh my gosh, chat. We're gonna free a slave. And if this video hits 40k, I just might free another. But if it doesn't, they're staying. Like, how do you even take that seriously to a point, you know, jumping in there, doing your wild hand motions, talking about if we hit 40,000, we'll free another slave. What? How do you even come up with this idea? And secondly, how do you even go around your friends and family after they see your goofy ass on there talking about you hit 40k, you're going to free another slave? What in the hell are you talking about? You're a grown ass man. And I hate to go there, but you both are grown ass men sitting there screaming in front of a camera talking about I'm going to free some slave off the dark web if we hit 40,000 likes. What is he doing? Jay, he's getting close to you! Oh, no. What is he doing? Oh. By the way, this whole slave video that they made is a little bit over 20 minutes long, if I'm fully correct here, by the way. And secondly, I just want to point out, they're freaking the fuck out like he's got a massive butcher knife in his hand. He slowly walked over to him with a fuck lint roller what is he going to do with a lint roller i mean it's not a dangerous weapon i could maybe understand like maybe you could sell it off by giving him a bat or something but a lint roller guys what the hell why is he what is that is that a lint roller he's cleaning me guys what the freak oh my god oh 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 my god guys he's cleaning me he's like delinking my clothes why is he doing that? I don't know. Because I'm freaking out. Oh my god. I'm gonna your money's worth. Money's worth? Okay, okay, that's enough. I think he's okay. That's enough. Oh my god, guys. This is freaking insane. He's cleaning. Oh my god, Ahmed. This is insane. What? What? Kidney? A kidney? Whoa, 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 why is he talking about kidney? Why are you talking about my kidney? I'm just fucking clean here, that's all. Okay, I'm clean, thank you, thank you. Put that thing down, put it down. Now I'm going to show you guys a few of the clips from J Station talking about when Etika passed away. 
In Jay Station's video, he goes on to say multiple times that anybody making a video about Etika, anybody talking about Etika on like Twitter or Instagram, you know, they're scumbags, even if they didn't like monetize it, unless they donated money to a charity or Etika's family, then they're scumbags for even talking about it. But what really, really got a lot of people heated when this originally came out was him, you know, basically de denying the existence of any other type of depression unless it's exactly like Etika's. Basically, Jay Station sitting there calling out any other YouTuber who acts depressed or says they are depressed because it's not exactly like Etika's, saying that if you don't have the same depression as him, then you really don't have depression at all. And every time I see that argument that Jay Station makes, I think it's the dumbest shit known to man. You really can't compare anybody's struggle to anybody else's struggle at all. It's very hard to find someone to relate to with whatever you're dealing with. It's never really the same as anybody else's because your thoughts are your own. In the seven minute long rant that Jay Station's video had, he somehow manages to turn the situation from the actual very sad passing of a popular YouTuber into a what if scenario if he died. Because a few weeks prior to this video that he made, he made another video talking about how he almost got killed by a bunch of people and stuff in his own home. And now ever since he's been paranoid, but everything he said never had any like claims to it that proved what he said to be true. Nothing really ever proved what he said to be true. The video he made talking about when he almost died seemed like it was heavily fabricated in almost every single way possible. I'm going to show you a bunch of clips from that seven minute long video of him talking about Etika now. What's poppin' guys? I just got back from the middle of nowhere in an insane asylum. I checked Twitter right now and I saw the most horrific news I've ever seen, man. Honestly, guys, and it, it comes from comments on my YouTube channel telling me, Jay, you better not do the Ouija board on Etika. You know what, man? I see a lot of these YouTubers tweeting about Etika. Oh, you're my best friend. Oh, this guy's the greatest. I see people making YouTube videos about it, bro. They not doing shit, bro. So what your YouTube video don't have ads, bro? Donate to that shit. If you're not donating to, to Etika or his family or mental health when you're tweeting about it. Or you're making a YouTube video about it. You're doing it for attention, bro. So when you're going to get mad at me for the Ouija board, you're doing the same shit. It's for attention. Who cares about the ads, bro? You care? You think this YouTuber with 4 million subscribers care about 500 bucks from a YouTube video? He'll he'll take the ads off and be like, oh, well. You don't really care, though. You just, you're just doing it for attention, bro. Look, man. I almost died like a week ago, bro. For real, bro. I'm up in my car right now. I'm ready to die, bro. I feel like I'm going to get murdered, bro. You know what that feels like? And then people are saying online that that shit is fake, my dude. Bro, you can't tell the difference between my regular video and this shit. I don't want people to make YouTube videos about me, okay? If I was... I, literally, I thought I was about to die. And in my brain, I thought about, man... Are people going to think this is a joke? Are they going to, what are they going to do, man? I thought I was legit about to die. And I'm like, man, they better not do no freaking Ouija board about me, bruh. Here, this is what I'm going to ask you guys watching this video right now. Let's say that you have a YouTube channel with 150,000 subscribers, a very hefty amount of subs. Now, let's say you're getting robbed for some unknown reason, you're just a random person getting robbed, right? And then you think that you're not going to make it out of this alive. Is your very first thought is, God forbid someone makes a Ouija board video about me. No, that stuff is stupid as hell to think. You're just thinking of how you're going to get out of this alive and you just want to get home safe. There's no way in hell that you're sitting there in a dangerous situation, Jay Station, and your immediate first thought in a dangerous situation that you might not live from and your immediate first thought is, damn, really hope someone don't make a Ouija board video about me. On mental health, YouTubers just putting, oh, I'm, a, I'm depressed, guys. I'm depressed, I'm breaking down, I got depression. Or, I do something bad, it's because I was depressed. He's hard on that shit, cause you know what, it's true bro. 
These YouTubers are doing this, making five different videos about being depressed. Bro, I'm sad too, bro. But I'm not about to say I got depression, dude. Because you know what, man? If you didn't feel like Etika did, you don't got depression, my dude. You don't got depression. You're doing it for attention. So next time you sad, suck it up, bro. And just give your, your, your fans what they want to see. Ah, uh, yes. Way to make a video talking about someone who just went through one of the worst things humanly possible just to tell anybody else who just might be feeling exactly like him to suck it up and just give the people what they want and to not open up about how they feel. That's a, that's some, that's a very great opinion. It's almost as if that's exactly one of the things that caused other things like that to happen in the first place. Literally sitting there and validating multiple people that could possibly be at their lowest points, just telling them to suck it up. I mean, it's it's insane. It's wild that someone could be that stupid on the internet with such a massive following. It's genuinely disgusting. I don't know how anybody could take what Jay Station says literally. I mean, he made a video right after Mac Miller passed away. If you don't know who Mac Miller is, he was a singer slash rapper who also dated Ariana Grande. So Jay Station does a you know Ouija board video like he does with anybody dies. And what happens is at a certain point in the video, after he's basically just clowning on him, clowning on Ariana Grande after what happened and everything, that terrible sad situation, he even looks at the camera right into its lens looking into the metaphorical eyes of the viewer saying one like is one prayer for mac miller's family and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna talk about all these things while you're this disgusting monster who's doing these terrible things acting like whatever happens to other people in this world is a joke now I think it's about time we take a look at one of Jay Station's past girlfriends who came up with a bunch of wild stuff to the point where Jay Station even compares himself to Jesus Christ. Now it's not the one ex-girlfriend that you're thinking of where he made a video faking their death just to get some views and making multiple, multiple videos about it. This is a completely different one so let's delve right into it. The woman I'm going to be showing you in all of these clips is named Aiko. Aiko is Jay Station's ex-girlfriend, and every single screenshot and every single clip that I'm going to be showing you here today, it will be already after months after them breaking up. So there is no ties between them anymore, really whatsoever, besides Jay Station just being manipulative and abusive. Now in this clip I'm about ready to show you, Jay Station is on the phone with Aiko, he doesn't know it's being recorded, but he says in this clip that he believes that he is very influential, so influential to the point where if he was born when the Bible was being written, he would be written in that Bible, wrote about to, just like Jesus Christ is. As to how you get to be this level of delusion, I do not know. I will never fathom how you can get this delusional in your life, but here's the clip. It's, no, it's not. You know what, Jay? I think you're reading the wrong textbooks. You should probably go read the Bible. I've read the Bible, I go. Oh, really? And what does the Bible say? People want power? Jesus wanted power? Is that what it says in the Bible? Tell me that. But Screenshot that to me and then show, show it to me. Aiko, he had a, like almost, he has almost the whole entire world still resting his name, okay? Okay, he but does, it doesn't mean that he- I want Aiko, that's exactly the same way they're trying to take out Jesus, they're trying to take out me, okay? I'm like one of those dudes. If they wrote the Bible back then, they put me in it, man. I'm not even lying. That you would be in the Bible? I will definitely be in the Bible, Aiko. But what have you done to- for people. So as you can see, very, very delusional here, heavily delusional. It, it's very insane how someone could even believe those words coming out of their own mouth or have those thoughts. Now I'm going to show you another clip that really does showcase the switch in his personality and behavior. This clip also shows how manipulative he can be. I mean, we know that he is one, especially in these types of relationships. The girl who he faked her death about in that fatal car crash, he said, when she made a video about her still being alive and him being a complete and total monster, she even mentions how manipulative he was, not letting her have any types of social media like Instagram, Facebook, wouldn't let her contact her family at certain times. Just a very terrible and nasty situation. What? You gotta delete your shit, man. Go to school. Listen, Iko, I'm telling you something for real, dude. 
What would you do if I paid your your ex boyfriend ten G's to come and expose me with you, or expose you with me? Go ahead and do and it. What would, do, what would you do if I got uh, uh, Karina to do it too? Go ahead and do it. Broke as shit. Go ahead and do it. Okay. What? I want to tell you I just love you. Okay. I love you so much. Okay. And I just hope that that the dick tastes good, nigga. Cause you. You can really see the change in mood there whenever he doesn't get the results he wants. He immediately just goes to insulting and saying a bunch of random shit like a 7th grader would after his first breakup. These screenshots I'm going to be showing you here will really highlight how pathetic he can actually be. He says, make you money is interior design and dance. You think I'm a joke or some shit, do you? Your daddy the only one to take you serious. Tell me one other bus driver you'd listen to. Wake the fuck up, man. Your family is not rich. I'm going to ask you nicely. Please drop out of school, quit dance, and win, please. In these screenshots that I'm showing you, it's just him constantly mentioning how he's going to be very successful on YouTube because he's pulling in a lot of views and he's making all of this money, just trying to show that he's superior to her in every single way because he's, you know, having his little hot streak right now with his views and clickbait titles and controversy surrounding his name. In this screenshot, he says, good luck dancing in a nun place. Or good luck study for interior design doing that. Dance and interior design, both are BS. Anyways, yo, you messed up again, because your shit's not breaking 10k. Which way do you go? You're not reaching nothing but mediocrity the way you play your life. You can drop everything and go do YouTube, or you can live your life in your mom's house all your life, but you got till Monday gonna edit. I also really think it's funny how he tries to sit there and act like he's better than everybody, but he's spamming like multiple messages, well over 30, without ever getting a single response and being constantly left on scene. Now that is going to be it for today's video. I know this is a different video than I usually make. I just wanted to make this video for a very long time coming, so I thought, why not just make it now? I will get back to what I originally make very soon. Probably tomorrow you'll see a video that's very similar to all the other ones I make. But until then, thank you all for watching today's video. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day or night, depending on the time of day that you do end up watching this video. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. See ya.